Hey guys, over the last week or so, I've been reading about a lot of interesting monitors that are scheduled to be released, and they're kind of obscure, but they're also weird and wonderful. So I'd like to share them with you today. The first one I want to show you is perhaps more ridiculous than obscure. It's a 27 inch Full HD gaming panel with a one millisecond response time, but this has a 500 hertz refresh rate. 500 hertz that is insane so this is from a company called boe beijing oriental electronics group and we have seen 300 hertz and 360 hertz refresh rates in gaming laptops and gaming monitors over the last few years so it's not going to surprise me if we do see this being available in the next two years from companies such as alienware but 500 hertz plus just seems ridiculous to me and i can only imagine what kind of PC you have to build to actually utilize that. I do I do recognize that certain games, Counter-Strike, etc., you can get really, really high frame rates, you know, with relatively relative ease, but still, 500 hertz seems like we're going into the kind of ridiculous category. So the company also released a 110-inch 8K 120 hertz display. Is that the future of gaming? Who knows? Who knows what happens in the future? Right. Let's move from ridiculous to obscure and look at the Thanko. So this is in Japanese, but we'll use Google Translate here to see what's going on. And this is actually quite a hilarious little monitor. It's retailing at around $100 when you convert it from yen to US dollars. And you can see it here. This has got a 1280 by 400 pixel resolution and they actually marked it as having a 7.9 inch diagonal, which is completely meaningless at this point when you've got an aspect ratio like that. But yeah, it's, it's a, a quite a, an obscure little monitor and you can see from the stand and the casing, it, it's kind of cheap. And it is cheap, you know, it's like $100, but I can't see what they're trying to do here from a marketing point of view, because they're trying to market this as a way to check your social media feed. Instagram, tw Twitter, and whatever. And I can't see why this lovely gentleman here can't just check on his laptop or his phone or perhaps a tablet. I don't know why he needs a dedicated screen just for his social media. But they do explain that in the description area and I'll show you that. So yeah, looking at it here, I can't see the appeal of using this to check social media. But this does look like a, uh, an appealing monitor if you use it for a Raspberry Pi or use it with your desktop PC or perhaps even your laptop to check CPU usage, GPU usage, uh, temperatures, memory, you know, just seeing how your computer is performing. So I can see the appeal of the monitor from that point of view, but it's worth noting that yes, it's a hundred dollars, but I mean, they've not even got the, the micro B connection here aligned with the HDMI port. And why are they even using micro B anyway? Use type C. It's just bizarre. So you can see at the side here that it's 70 by 208 by 16 millimeters. It weighs 174 grams, 1280 by 400 pixels, 7.9 inch diagonal. And it's not supported by Mac, but is that a surprise? You know, it's obviously gonna have some driver issues there or something. Okay, let's look at how they promote this. And this is, this is hilarious, look at this. Required if it is abolished. Super portrait display that displays the timeline for a long time. I keep checking Twitter all the time. I'm looking at the Twitter screen day and night and I'm worried if I don't look at TL. It is a display for the abolition of Twilight to give such abandoned people no extra features. It is vertically long display that is ideal for displaying Twitter TL or a Twitter timeline. I was wondering what they were talking about there. Um, yeah, that's just ridiculous. They're almost mocking the people that would actually buy this. So, yeah, if you're absolutely addicted to your social media feed like this guy is, then maybe maybe this is the monitor for you. But let's move from the obscure to something which I actually think could be quite practical. This is the Lucos. It's been marketed on Kickstarter for around $400 and this actually is quite impressive. Now, $400 is a lot of money, I think, for a monitor like this. But this has an IPS panel. It's 4K. It's 100% sRGB. So, you know, pretty good from a color gamut point of view. 
It's got a 32 9 aspect ratio, it's got a 2 millisecond um, response time, and it's got a 60 hertz refresh rate. So, 60 hertz, you know, maybe first person shooters and, and certain racing games won't be good, but for other types of games, you could maybe use it. I think the aspect ratio is the biggest hindrance there for certain games, but you know, it is what it is. Um, you can see here this image for design and for business. Now, this photograph here kind of illustrates how I would use it because this is a, a monitor which I think I could actually utilize in my recording setup. You can position this under your monitor, you can use it as a second screen. And certainly when I'm recording on OBS, I'm juggling a lot of different you know, windows and different things. Some of them are not important. You know, I don't have to look at them all the time, but I do like to reference them every now and then. So that's where a second screen comes in and you can drag and drop them into that. So that's how I would use it. And yeah, in that regard, I think it could be quite practical. Um, it also says it can be utilized to check your, well, reading comic books, but also to check your desktop, CPU, GPU, you know, temperatures, etc. That's something which it could be used for as well. And I think that aspect ratio is quite useful for something like that. Perhaps you could even use it in a mining rig or, you know, something where you're mo monitoring the PC, networking, etc. Um, okay, so this is one area where I think they've got things right. Connections. They've got a fan switch here at the side, but look at the number of connections here. They've got seven different connections and you can connect four at the same time. So they've got DisplayPort 1.2, two DisplayPort 1.4, two HDMI 2.0B, and one HDMI 1.4. And they've also got a Type-C connection, a headphone jack, and DC in for power. And then they've got all the different indicators there. So from a connection point of view, yes, it doesn't have HDMI 2.1, but this has everything that you need to get the most out of this monitor. And that's quite practical. I think that's quite useful that you can connect this to lots of different devices. Perhaps you could you know, connect it to your Windows computer, but also switch to a Raspberry Pi, also switch to your laptop. I think that's quite good that they've got so many connections. And it's one thing that I hate seeing in certain monitors that they just don't have enough ports. So that's good to see. So yeah, this, this is an interesting little monitor for me. I do think it's probably a little bit overpriced, you know, because there's a lot of cool USB type C monitors you can pick up around that price. And I would probably gravitate towards that. Plus, you know, I've spoken about this on my channel before, but I, I do enjoy browsing Kickstarter because it lets you see what's out there. But it's always risky buying from Kickstarter. There's a lot of projects that get funded and then they don't go to fruition or, you know, the people that buy and actually, you know, fund the project get screwed and they sell it elsewhere at a lower price, etc. But, um, yeah, that is what it is. I think this is an interesting monitor, though, and it's something I could actually see myself using. Okay, last one I'd like to share with you all today. Well, it's actually two monitors. It's the Duex Lite and the Duex Plus. This is actually a follow-up to the Duex. And I guess this is more mainstream at this point. There's a huge market for second screens for laptops, and it's marketed towards towards business users. Now, if you, if you know anything about gaming laptops, etc., you'll be puzzled why they've picked this laptop. This is one of the Asus laptops with a second screen. So this laptop actually has a second screen here, which is why the keyboard is down low. But they have, for whatever reason, disabled it so that they can show the other monitor. So, for it's just bizarre. They've actually disabled the second screen to show you the other second screen. Why did they not just pick a MacBook or something? I don't know. But um, this actually is, is priced quite sensibly. Uh, the Duex Lite, which is 12 and a half inch uh, diagonal, it's $204. $209 for the 13.3 inch version. And this is not something I see myself using, certainly not in the way that it's marketed. What this, what these uh, what these screens can do is stick to the back of your laptop and then they slide out. That's the selling point of this screen. Now I would just use it as a monitor, I would just use it as a second stand, but they're marketing it as a way to connect to the back of your laptop and slide that second screen out and then slide it back in. It's not something that appeals me. I, I just don't like the idea of attaching a screen to the back of a laptop, but that's what this device is kind of designed for. And there is a market for that. I know there's a market for that because every time I go into Amazon, I always see monitors like this popping up, like second screens. 
Uh, you can see there's a review out there already. And yeah, they've hit their goals. You know, people want this. I mean, look at the funding this has got already. I think this is actually priced quite well. I mean, it's quite a basic screen and you'll see that in the specifications in a second, but I think they've priced it quite well. You know, this is I'm not going to say impulse buy territory, but it's not going to break the bank either. So it's an interesting idea uh, and it's something that they're obviously evolving from the last version. And yeah, you can see the asset stuck to the back of the laptop there and you've got it separately. And let's see, I place the, the slimmer magnetic adhesives on your laptop and then you can just connect it when you need to use it and then you can slide the screen out. That might appeal to a lot of you guys. It's you know, at that point, I would probably just gravitate towards getting a 15 inch laptop rather than a small one. But I do realize that a lot of people are looking for something like this. So here are some of the specifications here. Uh, 1080p, 1.3 pounds, only uh, 60 hertz, 16 9 aspect ratio, brightness adjustable up to 4.5 watts. And it uses, yeah, 4.5 watts. Windows, Mac, laptop, switch. Yeah, works with a lot of things. It's got two USB ports, one for connection, one to charge your laptop. USB Type-C and USB Type-A. So, yeah, I think it's quite a practical device. I think it's priced very sensibly. It's not obscure. This is actually quite a practical solution. It's just not something I would see myself using. I am quite attracted to the low cost. I think it's a little bit overpriced, though, because I do think there's a lot of good 10-inch to 15-inch second screen Type-C monitors out there that I would you know, put down here. They might look a little bit better and work a little bit better, but certainly out of those monitors, that's probably the one that appeals to me the most. But thanks for watching, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this look at some weird and wonderful monitors that are coming out. Please let me know what you think of these. I'd love to hear your thoughts on them down below in the comment area. And until next time, take care.